good. I thought, how's this guy going to go? He's going to be impatient. He's got a lot of stress, a lot of pressure on him. And so I basically just had to make sure he was manic all the time, but he just didn't stand for any crap from anyone, which is going to be a bit of a problem for the main group, I feel. Seeing the amount of hype that we got from the first season was ridiculous. Well, say the first season, the first like two episodes, I was absolutely baffled by the amount of support that we got off people. And to know that I was going to be the main bad guy for the next episode, it, it threw me back. To be perfectly honest, I didn't think that series two was going to happen at all. Uh, I thought that we'd just be shooting this as a laugh and just putting it on YouTube. But the progression from pilot episode all the way up to episode four and the, the views increasing and the people that started to get involved and it, everyone just started loving it and loving it and then just think it's a bit you know overwhelming and then series two is now happening we've shot the first two episodes and uh, we're hoping to shoot the next two as soon as possible Hey guys, I'm Gary. I play Gary in the seventh day. I'm kind of the right-hand man to your safe house owner, Lucas. Hello, I'm Lucas and I play Lucas in the seventh day, like the evil, but he's not actually evil, the um, priest. I've got to say, he's not as bad as you think he is, believe me. Like, there is a lot that's planned and he's the only person that is letting all these people in, so come on, give me a break, guys. I'm not that bad. Hello, my name is Jason and I play the role of Jason in the series The Seventh Day. Uh, my character is literally the average Joe. It, it's kind of like a, uh, an audience perspective. I mean, if you watch the trailer, you'll see that it's my uh, experience of a zombie apocalypse world and it's kind of inviting you in to experience what it would be like. So you would be along for the ride as an average Joe. You are thrown into it and you just try and take take it as it comes really. So how did I get involved with the seventh day? Well they put it out in Birmingham Mail when it started to get popular after the first couple episodes because let's face it it went pretty big and so I put my thing through. Uh, Richard had got involved someone I've been known since we were 12, 11, childhood friends now and so he basically told Lee if you're gonna need someone that looks the part that can play your guard I've got a guy and so Lee was like yeah we'll bring him in we'll see what happens and so I came in I did what I could I thought how's this guy gonna go he's gonna be impatient he's got a lot of stress a lot of pressure on him and so I basically just had to make sure he was manic all the time but he just didn't stand for any crap from anyone which is gonna be a bit of a problem for the main group I feel right let me tell you how I got into acting so back in college this is how I met the director and one of the other guys um, him Mr. Jason over there and we've been working for like an absolutely long time like how many years is it now smith about uh it has been six days <laughs> it's been like about 10 years but like i've known these guys for like a really long time now and i was like really really chuffed that they managed to get me involved in something 12 that's 12 years 12 years something that's like turned out to be so great and um, if you've not watched the seventh day where the hell have you been get on it and watch it please what has been a massive jump in series two well between series one and series two uh, well firstly camera quality from previous interviews you would have known that we have been shooting on a red camera so you'll notice a massive difference in that I think it was all shot on was it 6k or 6k wasn't it uh, and then in terms of like uh, production budget and things like that we have jumped from a small crew of what five people six people on a pilot to now we're up to about 200 people on set and it's absolutely crazy trying to you know it's just it feels like you know an actual film if that makes sense See, the amount of hype that we got from the first season was ridiculous well say the first season the first like two episodes i was absolutely baffled by the amount of support that we got off people and to know that i was going to be the main bad guy for the next episode it it threw me back because it feels good like it feels yeah like i like the fact that i'm playing somebody evil like somebody that's evil and into religion and yeah i happen to be black as well so like the crazy black preacher but it's not going down that line just way but yeah man like i'm i'm really really 
really excited to see what the future holds for where this series is going to go. Of course, we've got season two that's coming out, which is going to be absolutely amazing, mind you. But um, yeah, man, like it's it, we've had like it's been good. Like it's been a really good roller coaster. Like I'm nervous to know what's going to be happening in the future as well. Like you might think I know the whole entire plot. <laughs> no, I have no bloody idea. I'm just as much in the loop as you guys. But I guarantee you, it's going to be good. Right, so in series one, I started off as, let's say, a glorified extra. I was the head of the guards, so I had a few lines, but nothing compared to the mains. Now we come into season two, and I have my own backstory, which, let's face it, is huge. It's amazing. I could not be more grateful to you guys. Like, um, I think we're going to see a bit of, a bit of emotion, a bit of strain. We're going to see that pressure coming through a bit more now. He's going to have to start being a bit more erratic, a bit more unpredictable. And so hopefully you'll enjoy the backstory. We did it well, we brought in some extra stuff to make it a bit more interesting. I don't want to give too much away, but uh, it gets loud. Let's put it that way, very loud indeed. Uh, my favourite scene uh, from the first series is actually one that you stole, you git. Uh, it's the scene where we're all trapped inside the, uh, the abandoned workshop, uh, Richard's abandoned workshop. And then we, it's just the, kind of the whole process of cramming 40 zombie extras into such a tiny space with us three trying to fend them off with a ladder between us, a trap between a wall. And like, for myself personally, it was terrifying anyway, so I used that for my character. When you've got like 40 people trying to claw away and bite at you and things like that, it's just, you know, I mean, as my character's quite untrustworthy as well at that point in time, so it's quite interesting to see how well you work with others when you're at death's door, essentially, so. My favorite scene from series two, it's a tricky one because you can't really give much away at this point in time, uh, but there, something happens and a massive, massive fight breaks out and shooting that fight scene was like one of the best experiences I've ever done because we got to work with uh, Raf Aldis who is our stunt coordinator for the film and he's also a good friend of mine from Stage Fight which is a, a stage combat company and the skills that I got from you know learning with Raf I used what well, translated over to film on the seventh day and it all started with uh, the director asking Raf, well, not asking, more telling Raf, uh, I want to do a three minute fight scene. And then Raf was like, can't be done. And then Paige was like, watch me. So One of the <laughs> funniest memories. <laughs> it's cracking me up now. One of the funniest memories um, off camera was like the very first time that I got to act again with Jason. And um, because we've acted for a really long time and like we're good friends, it's just the fact that it's a serious moment and it's it's so difficult not to smile or grin and like speaking about it now it might not sound funny but you know like when you're at school and you gotta be quiet, like you have to be silent and then this thing triggers you up. It's just like how me and him are like just it's oh god, it kills me every time. Like every time that I've got to act with him, like I, I, oh God, man, I can't, I'm just, I'm cracking up too much right now. I love it, but we do get through it, as you can see, obviously. Right, so coming into season two, as I say, we've gone bigger, we've gone better. Now, luckily for us, the day-to-day -day is pretty much still the same. People mess around, we sit around, we wait for each person to do. You hear silence on set like 400 times a day. So I like to think that even though we're up in our game, we've kept that same homely grit to us that we've got. I think, uh, Working so far, my favourite thing's still got to be my uh, back and forth with Brad. My first big scene, uh, it was just amusing, the timing was perfect. It showed that we were going to be able to bounce each other, off each other quite well. And to be honest, my favourite thing about the whole thing is getting to know all these guys. Getting to know you, and hopefully you guys getting to know the rest of us. Um, so one of the things that you could say that we have ticked off the box for the checklist of Series 2 is the gore factor. Because during the first series we were quite worried about um, not fulfilling the whole gore factor. It was too story driven, too character driven. But we listened to the audience, we listened to all the comments, well we didn't read them, um, we listened to all the feedback 
and uh, shut up. <laughs> and people obviously want gore. It's a zombie film. You want blood and guts flying everywhere. So we have had the opportunity to do a lot more of that with series two. We have Chris and Dean Garner from the Zed Brothers who are providing a ton more special effects, a lot more blood and guts. And there is a, a particular kill which was uh, one of my actually my favourite ones. And if anybody who actually went to the uh, the Birmingham uh, Horror Con would have seen that particular special effect demonstrated by myself and Lucas when we had a stall set up. But if you don't, then you're gonna enjoy it when it actually comes about. Um, working with the director, like obviously he's um, quite a close friend as well, but on set he's a completely different person, so you'll see him. You'll see him outside of work compared to how he is professionally, and like you think it's a completely different person. Like it's ridiculous how this persona comes out of nowhere, and like he's like this and that and whatever needs to be done. And like he's really on point. He's, he's great, great to work with. Like working with Lee, the director, has always been a charming experience. Uh, we have had a long history going. What was the first film that we made together? It was like when we were about. <laughs> We, we, oh god, no, not that. This has gone further back in that. No, we never talk of that film. Um, our first film we made was something like I don't know. We used to make crappy films all the time, like back in 2002 when we were like 12 years old, running around the fields with a camera. But our first proper film was when we was in college. I think it was like 2006, 2007, Asunder, uh, and just thinking it's crazy. Like, and then you move. 11, 12 years on and here we are now making higher quality productions even though Lee has not changed at all like his style is always the same but it's a lot more professional and working on set with him is uh, well you, you can tell that he's matured as a director um, and he always tends to take on uh, quite a lot of the jobs when he shouldn't be hiring other people to do it. He likes to be the, he's a bit like, he's kind of like the, uh, the Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> he's the, the writer, the director, the producer and the star, if you could act, but uh, yeah. Right, so after the film festivals, we were obviously nominated for quite a few awards. We won a few, well, I say we, Lee won one. Best director. Uh, I think it's you know, it's going to help us with exposure. It's going to show all of you guys, you know, that we're not giving up. We're trying to go bigger. We're trying to go better. As for Lee, I mean, you know, he takes his time with things. He's got a lot of stuff going on. You know, flying to America, doing his, you know, health and fitness videos. Yes, he is a wanker. That's that's right, Lee. You are. And so, but uh, I think I think he struggles sometimes. I think he thinks it's going to be a lot easier than it's going to be, and then on the day he has to put it with a lot of crap but I think his hard work's paid off. He deserves the award. As much of an asshole as he is to the rest of us, you guys should love him. It's crazy to think of how far we've come. Like, at the moment, we're halfway through series two. We've got the whole of series one on YouTube, which is like nearly at 40,000 views. Uh, Lee's currently in talks with the producers about series three. Don't know about that, yeah? Um, but it's just crazy to think of how far it's come like since last year because um, my involvement in it was uh, well back in April 2017 uh, I was down in London at the time and uh, for some bizarre reason I happened to bump into Chris Pratt the Hollywood famous actor man and, <laughs> and <laughs> yes uh, yes I did and um, I just asked him for advice. I was like, do you want to part any words to a struggling actor? And he said to me, when the work dries up, you have to create your own. And I thought, well, it's kind of obvious when you pull it that way, really. So, But then literally, it was like it was fate or something. I got a call from Lee like about a week later and saying, you know, we're making the seventh day and you're moving back up to Birmingham. Would you like to uh, be in it? And I was like, yeah. And here we are. Lee Page here, the director of the Seventh Day. I want to say a massive thank you to all of our patrons. Um, stay tuned, stay subscribed for your rewards t shirts, mugs, caps, DVDs, signposters, all that stuff's going to come your way. The longer you sort of stay subscribed, the better you get. But thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, click this button. It should, this button right here should appear and you should subscribe. And yeah, amazing. Thank you.